And we're back! God. Uh, and we're gonna be talking to, to, uh, who are you talking to? J- oh, goody. Yeah. It's, it's time for adventure. Every Everyone's favorite. Our favorite. We love mm -hmm. him. Do you have a favorite alpha kid, actually, before we start the route? Mine is Roxy. <laughs> I'm- Torn between Roxy and Dirk, but leaning towards Roxy due to recent events. <laughs> that I will not specify. Oh, look. Huh. I forgot that was there. In the background. Yeah. Huh. You got a big old fella. Hi. Yeah. I don't know if- I don't think Solix's root actually let us see his Lucis. It did not. No. Not in- I should say. I think there's a bad end. Oh, okay. That includes, um, I don't know. But, uh, all you wanted to do was make a new friend, and now you're running like hell from a giant white creature with two heads, each sporting a single garish eye. Kind of like a cyclops, except with two of the one-eyed faces, so you guess it's a duo cyclops? Whatever it is, it's angry as hell and chasing you through a tangled jungle. You leap over a stand of ferns and duck under one of those big woody vine j vines jungles always have. After befriending Jane, you asked her for the names of some of her friends. Not too many details, you made that mistake with Solix. Just a little tantalizing friendship amuse-bouche to get you started. Specifically, you were interested in the friend that needed her help daily. Now that sounds uh, sounded like some fertile ground for a relationship. You kind of regret bringing it up, though, because Jane got very flustered telling you about Jake. It's clear that her friendship with this guy is a topic of some emotional turmoil. Well, who's better to help sort it out than you, everyone's friend? But instead of friendship, you've been greeted by a number of ferocious white monsters. Your garbled brain offers up that you've probably pissed off this kid's Lucis. Except this is Earth? Between different planets, different universes, and the mess of timelines in your memory, you're having a hard time figuring out. The trip over a big tree root and land smack on your face in the dirt. Uh, you choke on decaying pla plant matter clawing at your throat and roll ov over onto your back just in time to see the duo Cyclops about to bring down one huge foot right on your vulnerable body. Are you allowed to start over if you haven't even made a branching choice yet? You cover your eyes. Technically, every choice is a branching one, yeah. to be fair. Nothing happened. Yeah, but the menu didn't show up. <laughs> we didn't get to save. Yeah. We, yeah, we made no other choices getting to this point. Uh, after a moment of Olympic-level breath-catching, you venture a peek. The duo Cyclops is in pieces on the ground. Two pieces. You hope the thematic resonance offered it some comfort during it during such a brutal end. You scramble to your feet. Your future new friend, Jake, must have intervened to save you. You look around for him, but there's another swoosh noise and a glint of metal, and something inhuman appears in front of the duo cyclops' body. It's a robot. Kind of a cartoony one, with shiny metal joints and big red anime sunglasses. It even has a perfectly gelled metal hairstyle. Honestly, it looks pretty goofy, but it's also holding a katana and staring right at you. You think you saw something similar broken all over the floor of Equius's room. It must be a battle robot, and you don't have the strength of your punchiest friend. <laughs> what shall we do? I don't think we should. Yeah. Shall we not? <laughs> yeah, yeah maybe not. let's not. Let's not. <laughs> <laughs> you default to your old standby, cowering. You shrink back, hands raised in the universal symbol for whoa now. Shit, no horse pun intended. For some reason, the thought of Equius and the presence of this robot are making your brain go right to horses. In jars. Suddenly, a shot rings out behind you. It sounds so stupid that you almost don't believe it, but it's true. Who is shooting a gun at a robot? The robot makes a little vrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
It doesn't fall to the ground. Instead, it puts the kid, a human, you can now see, so probably this is, uh, so probably this Jake guy, into a headlock. He struggles, lashing at it with his elbows and kicking at its ankles. The robot proceeds to beat the kid up. There's no reason to describe it in detail. It's unpleasant <laughs> to watch and makes you feel really bad. <laughs> you didn't even know there could be a polar opposite of Equius, but this kid is it. The robot is super effective against him. You have to stop it, but there's too much action for you to get close. Even if you could reach Jake, there's no way you could zap him out of there without bringing the battle robot battle bot with you. Except things have been weird lately. The accepted rules of your power no longer seem so inviolable. Maybe you can just do it? You close your eyes and think really hard about bringing Jake with you. When you open your eyes, a young man stands in his bedroom. Wait, is it Jake's birthday? No. What? Uh, you shake your head in consternation. Anyway, you manage to bring Jake, and only Jake, into the house. He stands there, clutching his side and panting, re recovering from the robo beatdown. The guy's bedroom is so covered in movie posters, it's hard to e even see the shapes of the walls. The floor is littered with weaponry. A lot of the kids you've met live like this, basically lounging around in piles of detritus pertaining to their character-defining interests. Anyway, it's clear to anyone who sees this room that he absolutely fucking loves movies and guns. You don't need to waste any time on exposition here. Any, uh, any... Yeah, un unfortunately, he's very British. <laughs> I... <laughs> I strongly reject that notion. I strongly reject that notion. This bitch grew up on an island. He doesn't know what British is. He does know what British is. This bitch didn't go to school. You see how he talks? You see how he talks? Can you please put that in mood? I can. But I mean, he also watches a ton of movies. I mean, yeah, but... Unless I unless I don't remember my lore right and he's actually never watched any of them, but I believe he has. Uh, and Jake also English has like never that. watched a movie. <laughs> never watched a movie. He's yeah. never watched a movie. But, um, he just he likes the pictures of... Yeah. In all seriousness, I believe he is supposed to be British from what yeah. I can tell. Canonically, despite growing up on an island, I mean, it's not like he doesn't have any influences to develop an accent. He watches so many movies. So maybe yeah. he just chose to speak like a British person in one of the movies or something. He's just like, <laughs> I'm gonna do this. No yeah. one's here to stop me. It doesn't help that his last name is English, so that might have influenced his choice a little bit. Yeah. If it's a choice. God, I can't do accents. Being British shit. is a choice. I'm <laughs> sorry, English at birth. <laughs> God, I'm so glad British people aren't real. They're so fucking scary. <laughs> like this dude, the Magnus Archives, all that shit. Horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to my fictional it. British viewers. <laughs> Fuck. Jesus. <laughs> uh, anyway, unfortunately, I can't do accents for, for like, any reason. Just chase your bliss. Do what- <laughs> Look at this man, read his lines, and- just let the Jake rise up within you. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna throw in a few governors so I can get it accurate. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, what I was yeah. doing in the background when I was doing Roxy's a Long Island voice. Every so often when it was her time to speak, I would softly say, strong dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I could hear you. <laughs> uh, I, I couldn't make out what you were saying. I thought you were just <laughs> not close enough to the mic. <laughs> Uh, uh, to get to the accent, I have to say strong blood. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's not gonna help me get into the accent at all. I just think it'd be funny. <laughs> I'm gonna well, be. Let, let, I'm, let's hear it. Let's do some I'm accent gonna be, humor. I'm gonna be so offensive to British people. Who let's cares? Work, so, it's okay. Brits they're fictional. Not, Brits aren't real, so you can have no one to offend. <laughs> 
I remember. Remember that they chose to speak like that. The original yeah. English accent sounded more like an American one. They chose this. This is what they wanted. <laughs> God, I need a second to calm down. Oh, I'm getting a fucking headache. I like the National Treasure poster. It's <laughs> kind of hiding in the in the right. Ghost Rider. I remember one time I was taking an Uber, and it was one of the fancy Ubers where they have like a like a bunch of snacks and like an iPad s fucking strapped to the back of the 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 headrest so you can watch some shit. And the dude had fucking Ghost Rider on. Nice. That's it. That's the story. I. What is that? Good. What is the poster next to his hand? Uh. Because I, I. Ghost Rider, Ghost the Rider. Mummy. Okay. God, I kept, I kept misreading Ghost Rider. He has two mummy posters. Oh yeah, of course he does. He does. Huh. I kept, Are I kept like misreading mummy? Ghost Rider as fascist pisser. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, that would be the last route. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Jesus Christ. <sighs> Fuck. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I can't even do my fucking joke. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't have to do the voice, man. Just chase your bliss. <laughs> oh, man. Trust me. The voice I was going to do wasn't going to last. <sighs> Oi, governor! <laughs> <laughs> I have a fucking headache now! <laughs> Jake English has fucking killed you. <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> oh god. God, it's a good thing I never opened this can. <laughs> uh, free drink. Oh god. Um, okay. I like how on the wikis for all the characters, when it has like their typing stuff written out, it has it written in their quirk style. It's fun. Yeah. Oh, fun. Oh, God. Okay, I think I've recovered. I like his, his jams. Yeah, they're nice jams. Yeah, nice and funky. <sighs> Jeez, I'm creasum. Are you, you all right there, my chromatically challenged chappy? You're fine. Jake is the one who seems hurt. That robot really did a number on him. I'll say, confounded thing practically never doesn't do a number on me. There's so many numbers, it's one sort of a standing ovation down on Broadway to have. I'm just glad I could be there to help. You know, life is always just a smidgen easier with a bro's helping hand firmly placed on your behind. I'm sorry? Uh-huh. Yeah? With a friend behind you is what I mean to say. Uh-huh. And our legs captivated him immediately. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, Jake doesn't really seem phased by any of this. Not the alien monsters on his island, not your presence, and not his ungainly defeat at the hands of the anime robot. <laughs> not even by you teleporting him around. Well, sure, my good buddy Jane told me you might drop by. And honestly, I've been chopping at the proverbial bit to meet you, an old fellow me lad. I'm sure Janie shows you a good time. She's an apple stand-up home, top-notch friendo. An absolute wonder wench and no doubt about it. Oh gosh, I've just been so gung-ho to show a brand new personage around the old digs. Get it? I love in a ruined temple, so it's literally digs. Eh? 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 Fine, that's a cute sprite. Yeah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> nudge you with a meaning elbow and give you a hearty raising raising of the brows. Did he just say that out loud? He did. Well, here you are, ready to be shown around the ruined temple. Where to first? <laughs> Let's not actually go there. You know, I'm no stranger to danger, but there's nothing like a man's familiar four walls to give him a feeling of peace and quietude. 
We'd better hide out for a bit. Just a tactical withdrawal while my robo buddy and the usual monster menagerie are out and about. Right, the monsters. You can't help but notice that this is the same island where Jade lived, but instead of one big white creature custodian like Beck, Jake has lots. Trying to be culturally sensitive, you tell him it must have been nice to have such a big family. Jake looks perplexed. I reckon it might be nice. Must be nice. Can't say I've ever had one, though. Family's what you're looking for. You couldn't have picked the worst place to mount your search. There's, about, there's about as much familiar spirit in my locale as cows in a cornfield. Would you say there's simply none to be seen? Oh, shit. You misinterpreted things. So Jake really just lives here alone? That must be hard. I'll say. As another of my friends could tell you, there's nothing worse than being a teen stranded alone in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, man. My grandma used to live here with me, but she died a long time ago. You think of your friend John, or rather his corpse, standing ceremonially, ceremonially in Jane's living room. Same house, similar kids, same island, mysteriously dead grandma. It's not hard to put two and two together and come up with your dead friend Jade. It's a gut punch, even though the inexorable passage of time means that, of course, you could zap to the future and visit time periods where all of your friends are dead if you wanted. You guess that's kind of what you did to your old friends by skipping forward so many years on Alternia. Haha, <laughs> wow. You're kind of starting to hyperventilate about this. You focus hard on Jake, trying to pull yourself together. Luckily, he doesn't seem to have noticed anything is wrong with you. Jake seems like the kind of person who doesn't have room in his head to talk and notice other people at the same time. But I try not to complain. After all, things could be worse. I have all the cans a boy could ever want to cook alive. I get to romp in the pumpkin patch to my heart's delight. Plus, this island is a perfect setting for one of the coolest things in the world. That's right, adventure! <laughs> the thrill of discovery, the frenzy of battle! Too bad I keep getting the shit kicked out of me! <laughs> it's the most fulfilling diversion of them all. Why no boy of sound disposition could feel sad about his perpetual isolation and the deadness deadness attribute of his family members when the whole dark and teeming jungle is available for his dauntless exploration. Deadness attribute. <laughs> is that really what he thinks? You can't help but remember about 30 seconds ago when Jake said he didn't want to go out to the ruins. You're no problem, Sleuth, but Jake's room looks pretty lived in, not to mention the quantity of movie consumption suggested by his decor. You're about to respond when there's a horrendous clatter from down below. Jake freezes, a small animal caught in headlights. You suspect the headlights are of the red anime glasses variety. <laughs> oh, fuck buttons. The Metal Maverick made his return. Listen, you look like a rum customer with Primo Getaway sticks. Fleeing is probably our best option here. You don't get it. The last guy you knew who made a habit of consorting the ba with battle bots always bested them handily. Why would Jake make something he couldn't be? Well, jump to hove hatch. I'm touched by your high opinion of my robotics and know how. But no, I didn't make the robot. My best buddy did. He's a gen genuine whiz with techs of all kinds. And a real thoughtful guy, even though sometimes I wish he would apply some of that big brain box to help me out a touch more. He couldn't be here himself because of the physical limitation of time and space, so he has sent me the robot to train me. It was. It's really nice if you think about it. I mean, at first I thought it was somewhat overbearing and unnecessary, but after Dirk explained it to me, I got it that was it was his way of being nice. Hmm. Uh, I'm a robot to beat the shit out of you. Yeah, hmm. This best friend sounds... Hmm. Not everyone is as lucky as me to have three Star Wars compa compadres to brighten their day in, uh, bleh, 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 when they live alone on a murder island. When you think about it, I'm just about the luckiest gent who was ever stranded in the middle of the Pacific Ocean with a passel of ferocious monsters and a killer robot. You guess you could say that? You, uh, you guess someone could say that? If that someone was Jake? Another harsh sound from below reminds you of the urgency of the situation. You could easily teleport the two of you out of here, but, well... The creepy biotech chittering noise of drones still echoes in your memories. 
I've had some bad experiences trying to escape a killer robot with its eyes set on a friend. Escape via teleportation seems like a temporary solution at best. Sooner or later, Jake's probably going to have to face the robot. Is there some way the two of you, acting together, can take it down? Ah, you don't understand. Learn from your actions. Anytime I started to get the jump on that dad burned chrome ass sucker, it just turned around and giving itself a thorough school feeding on top of kicking my sweet bippy. <laughs> if we fight it together, I'll just learn how to fight two people. Then when you leave me all by my lonesome, I'll be up shit creek with nary a paddle to be found. Like that robot in The Incredibles. Except instead of being an absolute fantastic work of cinematic art, it's my real life! Jeez, I'm crease him. Jake's friend is among the worst gift givers you've ever seen. <laughs> There's just one thing we can do if a hasty treat isn't what tickles your biscuit. We can find a way to turn off turn on novice mode, it'll be easier to deal with. I usually don't do it, but I hate to subject a guest to the violent viscistitudes of a robotic rascal. But I can't I just can't remember how it's done. Oh, okay. So at least this friend included an easy mode. You're starting to think this guy was one of those gamers who thought easy modes cheapened the experience. But if he designed the thing with a novice mode, maybe he can remind Jake how to trigger it? Well, I have to admit, you've really put the your achromatic digit right on the achromatic. Mm. Yeah. Right on the crux of the matter there, amigo. Try to bang up bro, and I and I won't utter a word against him, but he doesn't, like, offer help. I imagine hell... Hell, think... Heal. Yeah, he just doesn't it's... use apostrophes. Yeah. Because he's stupid. He'll think it's my fault for getting in the first place. He probably won't want me to give the answer because then I won't learn the lesson that I shouldn't have been so forgetful. Wow. Okay. You are starting to form some tentative opinions about this Strider guy. That said, Buddo, I think you stumbled onto quite the slick situation to our woes. Solution. I can't speak. None of There's us no can. shame in a brave adventurer asking for help when he's well and truly fucked. <laughs> Maybe we can find someone willing to offer us their casa as a temporary abode. Oh, sure, you could do that. Maybe Jake could message Jane. Although, now that you think about it, given how Jane talked about Jake when you were there, it seems cruel to spring something like this on her with so little lead time to prepare herself. You don't want to fluster her too badly. You quickly backpedal, telling Jake that Jane seemed too busy when you were there last. Is there anyone else? Well, Roxy's probably zazzled by now. Zazzled? You know, pie-eyed, on the two, tying one in, deep in the giggle water, three sheets to cold r no reister. Oh, wait, she's drunk? Bingo, what's his name, though? So this is a common thing, and she's Jake's age? You don't want to make any assumptions, but that sounds, well, concerning. And also, familiar. You remember what feels like a long time ago now, helping a girl symbolically trash her mother's liquor collection. Of course, alcoholism isn't that rare, but still, you're starting to feel like there's something strange about all these convergent circumstances. Anyway, is Jake sure his friend is okay? Ah, oh, it's nothing like that. Roxy's just a fun and wacky gal. <laughs> fun and wacky. Fun sure, she dabbles in the devil's drink, but she can always have a have a, such a good time. I wouldn't want to make unfair assumptions about it. Somehow, this fails to make you feel better. Somehow. I guess Astro Strider for help is our only options. I just know he's going to be a complete pain in the keister about it. I have to butter him up good like a morning muffin. Are you any good at manners of persuasion? Yikes. <laughs> you want to understand where this kid is coming from, but you're reaching your limits here. Is that really all the friendships Jake has? If so, that is bleak. There's clearly some kind of feelings-based train wreck on the horizon for him and Jane. His friend Roxy is obviously having a crisis that Jake pretends not to see. And his friendship with Strider has more red flags than the People's Republic of China. 
Is this what Jake is willing to put up with just for companionship? He just pretends he doesn't see the huge issues in his friendships to keep the peace? This what it looks like for someone who is so indiscriminately hungry for affection that they're willing to go along with anything to get mm. it? Um, <laughs> mm. 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 You've had about enough. You tell Jake you can't stand this anymore. This life that he has, it's not good, not even close. He lost his family and he's scared to leave his house. His only company in real life is a robot that's programmed to hurt him, and he thinks it was a gift. He seems unwilling to face the glaring flaws in his closest relationships. And all of this might be hard and sad, but it can't be helping Jake to be so deep in denial about it. He can't just cover this all up with cavalier optimism. There is no way that's the best way for him to live. You understand it must be scary when there seem to be structural flaws in every one of Jake's support pillars, but addressing them is the only way anything can get better. Because this hide this hiding out in his room all alone and just pretending he has the support he needs is not sustainable. You don't say this part, but if he keeps going along uh, with what other people want him to be, you're scared for what what's going to happen to him as he grows up. That can't lead anywhere good. After your rant, Jake stares at you aghast. You start to feel bad. Yes, he probably needed to hear those things, but you could have guided him more gently. You're usually an expert at encouraging people slowly toward emotional growth, but this kid really got under your skin. But then Jake's face crumples. You're absolutely right. Oh. I'm lying to myself. I manicure the image of myself as some brave adventurer, but I don't go out to the ruins unless I have to. I suppose that on some level I've suspected that things with Jane and Roxy and Dirt were exact weren't exactly Jake. Wait, what? Oh, uh, it's like a word that means good. Just plain English. Jake English. <laughs> Anyway, I guess I didn't realize how serious it was or how much I was really ignoring. These fucking Willikers, now you hear that all this came across loud and clear to a complete stranger. That really makes me feel low. But I guess for a truly brave gentleman, the only thing to do is try to, try to do better from here on out. The robot breaks in as we're having this discussion and kills us both. Mm -hmm. It's scary, but I do want to be the kind of person who is honest and forthright. A real hero. If I'm not doing that, then I need to figure out how to do that. Holy smokes, you really opened my eyes. <laughs> mix. Yeah, I think it's mix. just pronounced mix. Mix mixery friend. You have got a knack for spotting problems. Do you think you could stick around and help me do better? Uh, it's like asking the sun if it minds shining. Helping people confront their buried issues and come out of it changed for the better? Why, that's the very thing you've desperately latched onto to give your life some kind of purpose. But something about this feels off. Was your rant really all it took to turn things around for Jake? Did you really just fix him? It doesn't seem right. Definitely not good pacing anyway. Jake is looking at you with green, big green puppy eyes. You have to make a choice. Hmm. Hmm. I I can't see any way this could go wrong. Mm -mm. So do we want to help? Yeah. I guess. Just agree to help them. Yeah, we got you, bro. Mm. Of course you're going to help. Jake asked, didn't he? You think through your old bag of friendship tricks, encouraging him to talk to people about his feelings. It'd probably be good, but it's a little complex. He has three different relationships with these kids, all with their own set of problems. And you're not convinced that Jake is really up for confrontation yet. 
Your best bet is probably forging unlikely connections through your powers of teleportation and friend matchmaking. You think proudly of the time you introduced Daria to Tizius, someone who'd struggled with the questions Daria was facing, but found a more constructive solution. That's what you need. Not someone similar to Jake, but a good foil. Someone who will be able to call Jake on his avoidance. We take into Vriska, he dies immediately. <laughs> you need the ultimate pull no puncture, an expert in tough love. You need Vriska circuit. It! Blue lady. Oh, man. Blue lady, this is Blue a good lady. idea. This is gonna go <laughs> fine. You ask Jake if you might take the initiative to introduce him to another one of your friends. Someone who has the kind of take-no-bullshit approach that he needs to cultivate. Someone who can really help. Absolutely. Yeah. Lead on, buckaroo. You clap your hand mightily on his shoulder and zap on over to Vriska. You expect her to be in her hive, but when your field of vision clears, you're at the beach again. You've appeared a diplomatic distance away, not right up in her face. Briska is walking down the beach, hands in her pockets, occasionally aiming a disaffected kick at a piece of trash. You call out to her and wave her over. Her, space split, her face splits into a grin at the sight of you. It gives you a warm glow, like you've befriended someone's mean cat who never gets along with visitors. <laughs> Maybe more like someone's mean mountain lion. Hey there! Hi, Briska. What's she doing on this beach? I came here looking for my stupid fish, fish friends. Charlie and I need an explosive device for a thing, and as much as I hate to admit it, Ampor isn't bad at making them. But he's not even here! I can't even find the, him the one time I ever, I ever want to see him, ever. Figures, my so-called friends, leaving me to do all the work, again. It's this kind of self-starter energy that Jake could really learn from. Mm. <laughs> Speaking of, you start to introduce your friends to each other. But when you turn to Jake, he's frozen, his face caught in an expression of shock and wonder. Oh yeah, we didn't mention she's an alien. Yeah, maybe you should have mentioned your friend was an alien? You keep forgetting to mention things like that. As you look at him, Jake rallies, snapping to such a ramrod posture you half expect him to salute. He opens his mouth to speak, then shuts it. You can talk to her, you prompt. It's okay. Yes. Righto. Holy smokes, I'm ruffled as a baby's bonnet to meet you, Miss Vriska. I'm poisoned, trembling on, on the lip of your pit as knowledge is just as ready to fall in and the, into the exponent abyss. I have to learn whatever you can teach me. Although I must say, my pal here were here... Uh, Intimated. It, sorry, I just lost... I just lost all reading comprehension. It's okay. <laughs> Although I must say, my pal who intimated they had a friend who could help, I didn't expect you to be such of a blue and spidery persuasion. <laughs> of course. Why would anyone be anything else when they could be blue and spidery? Haha, <laughs> you have a solid point there, my extraterrestrial associate. Hope you're b pardon my candor, but a real gentleman doesn't hide from the truth. You may be the coolest girl I've ever seen in my entire life. And the only girl you've ever seen in your entire life. Yeah. Oh, okay. Don't. <laughs> oh, don't do that. I mean, I guess I'm gonna I hurt you. I guess just like, like, oh, okay, just... it, so she'll deal. Yeah. She's like, oh, just Nepeta again. Nepeta, <laughs> <laughs> Nepeta. A mix of Nepeta and Tavros. Allergic and honest to with himself. herself? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I can't say I'm surprised to hear it. Feel free to keep listing things that are awesome about me. Despite his, despite his professed admiration for Vriska, however, Jake isn't lis listening. Wait, technically the only other girl I've seen was my grandma, but you know what I mean. It's kind of disrespectful for her to one of those grandmas a girl, so I didn't mean her. 
Ah, gosh, seem to be rambling. Well, I hope this is a radiant exam exemplar of the kind of true being true to myself. I hope to cosplay as a regular habit from here on out. I think it can be very brave just being yourself, even when things feel awkward. Don't you think so? <laughs> oh, wow. There are so many things wrong with that, I don't even know where to start. Ah, dang it, really? This is why I need your help, Miss Vishka. I don't see anything wrong with all that. Here I'm going around thinking I'm saying everything is tickety-boo, and turns out it's all been a load of catty wumpus fiddle-faddle. Those aren't words! <laughs> Why are you British like... British people are fake! <laughs> British people aren't real. They're fictional. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is the nicest present anyone's ever gotten me. She's addressing you now, ignoring Jake's question. A predatory, a predatory shark smile spans her pointy face. You must have known things were getting bad with Tavros. In a different way than usual, I mean. I was just gonna say, we handed her another Tavros. We absolutely did. <laughs> uh... <laughs> he just kind of stopped responding in the same way he did before. Not even because of his fakey fraud confidence. He just says no good can come of talking to me. Whatever that means. Yeah. So you brought me a new nerdy loser. This rules! Well, that wasn't exactly what you expected, although now that you think about it, why didn't you expect this? Pretty much uh -huh. anyone could have seen this coming. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. Except Jake, of course. I may have my little quirks and quibbles, but that doesn't mean I'm a loser. I mean, you're not a loser. If you weren't a lady, I dare say such slanderous language would earn you one day tickets of Fisticuffs Island! <laughs> Which, now that I think about it, is more or less an appropriate moniker for my permanent residence. At least you're honest. How do you like them, Granny Smith apples? This is hilarious. <laughs> 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 I've never met anyone who makes me feel so good about myself. I'm so lucky to be cool. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Get him! <laughs> oh my god. Jeez, I haven't heard hide nor hair of an apology yet, yet, Miss Rude Alien Girl. Get his ass, Frisco. <laughs> <laughs> At least Jake is standing up for himself, but you get the feeling that this enthusiastic bra bravado wouldn't hold up if the issue was as interpersonal, uh, was an interpersonal one with his friends. Either way, Riska is not backing down. She sizes Jake up, stepping forward to intimidate him. Do you really want to fight? Because I get the feeling you're whatever your plan is the equivalent of a cult. Colate? Colbate. Colbate. Col oh, Colbate. Okay. Equivalent of Colbate is. Colgate. <laughs> <laughs> I may not know what that means, but I've never once backed down from a scrum, and I'm not about to start now, chum. You, sir, are toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, no. You are not going to let two of your best friends, a category that includes all of your friends, throw down right in front of you. <laughs> Especially not after Riska compared Jake to Tavros. Doesn't she remember the consequences of fighting Tavros? Doesn't she want things to go differently here? Wait. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> oh, no. You didn't mean any offense. You know Riska has been through a lot, but and her past mistakes should be viewed with that context. But you know Riska didn't mean to hurt Tavros as much as she did. R right? Riska is no longer having fun. She's turned to you now, her mouth set into a, into a line, fists clenching at her side. You remember how magical it seemed to have earned her friendship, and how easily Riska can lash out when she thinks her friends have turned on her. You think you know what went down between me and Tavros? Tavros was almost as pathetic as this guy. I was just trying to help him get stronger. But every time I did, he just folded like a loser. He barely even tried to fight back. He was so scared and wimpy. And everyone always gets mad at me for pushing him, but that's what our planet's going to do to him. If he doesn't get stronger, he'll die. Trying to protect him from danger now is just letting that happen later. I would even say I'm the only one who's ever really cared about him. At least I tried to help him shape up. 
You almost forgot Jake is here. But at this, he makes an indignant noise, and you turn to see that his anger and distress has ratcheted up several notches. Oh, pardon me, mi me Spider Smurfette. Doesn't sound like you were much of a friend at all. Spider Smurfette. Oh, get her. Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, God. You nudge Jake, trying to let him know that Vriska can be a little scary, and it might not be best to push her like push her on this, but Jake isn't listening. No matter how much you might think you're doing a fellow a favor, well, you said, well, you said he was really scared and sad. I'm sorry that doesn't make someone stronger, it just makes him scared. If you, want it, if you think it was good for him, if he said it was what he wanted... Like maybe when he was talking about a fighting partner, what he really wanted was companionship due to being alone all the time. Being totally candid, it's hard to believe you didn't know that. Which means it's really more that about what you want than what's best for him, even though you keep saying it's what's best for him, which makes it really hard to argue. All right, we took him to another dirt. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Anyway, if you ask me, you're a rotten friend, and I don't think I want you to be one of mine after all. Before Vriska can respond and almost inevitably make things worse, you cut her off. Enough is enough. You tell her you're sorry for making assumptions. You know that she was doing her best, uh, the best she could, with the raw deal she was given in this culture. You offer her a quick thank you for this hellish social interaction and ask for some time alone with your incipient friend here. Vriska still looks annoyed, but there's a moment where, and there's a moment where you're scared she won't let it go. But she does, stepping back and rearranging her facial expression to apathy. You guess pushing it would mean admitting she cares about your opinion of her. Whatever. Talk to you later, nerds. After she leaves, you put a comforting hand on Jake's shoulder. That got pretty raw, huh? Kinda seemed like, in the end there, he wasn't talking about Riska at all. Like there was someone else he wanted to say all that stuff to? Huh? No, this has nothing to do with me. It was about some weird alien situation. Hmm. 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 You gently suggest that this might be one of those situations the two of you were talking about earlier, where Jake is suppressing the truth because it's inconvenient to acknowledge. Doesn't it bear some slight resemblance to a situation in his own friend group? Jake averts his gaze, clearly uncomfortable. No way, all my friends are best in show. We were just talking. Yeah, we did. did you forget why we brought you here? Yeah. We bap him with a fucking rolled up <laughs> newspaper. Bad Jake. <laughs> we take some of the water out of the ocean and spray it at him. <laughs> <laughs> and even if what you were implying was true, it'd be different when you're friends. A man can't get, get by without his bros sometimes, he has to make allowances. Certain, let's say, eccentricities are just what you have to put up with when best friends are involved. No, they're no, not. I you up, like, on the daily. Yeah. You're allowed <laughs> to hold your friends accountable. This is weapons-grade interpersonal truth you're spouting, but Jake doesn't look enlightened. Instead, he's growing red in the face with indignance. What do you know about it, anyway? Not to be rude, but this is a very- it's a very personal situation between a fella and his buddies. I don't think I appreciate what you're implying. You don't want to get frustrated, but Jake did ask for your help. The two of you came here because you were going to face up to the hard truths about Jake's life. Doesn't Jake want to do that? Well, of course I do. I'm ready to take a hard look at, at, in on the old rum pep peeper, if you, and don't you doubt it. It's just uh, that when it comes to my friends, I didn't think you were saying any of them were bad. I thought you were encouraging me to make take things in a more forthright direction, because, well... Tug that collar nervously. I'm going to hurt this man. <laughs> because of their feelings towards me? Cost some. He has a hole in his ear. Oh. Huh. Gosh, it sounds stupid when I say it like that. I hope it's. You know, I'm not some kind of pompous braggadocio. Making myself. Is that a JoJo character? <laughs> I don't- What the fuck? <laughs> no one here- No one knows. I know. 
<laughs> That's why I said it. No one can question me. Braggadocio. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Take myself out to be some slick Casanova type. I'm probably just making up. I'm the kind of guy who gets confused easily, especially with the number of concussions I've sustained over the <laughs> over the years. <laughs> Ow. Oh, boy. A real... A real beef-witted bozo. That's me. Me too. Not gonna... <laughs> But more than once, I've gotten an inkling that some of my friends might be giving me the old eagle eye, firing up the courting maneuvers if you kept my drift. So I, when you said things weren't right between me and my friends, I thought the personal cha change train was headed. An impression only further bolstered when you proceeded to introduce me to your blue arachnid themed friend. I figured to remember my sapphire sirens from my room. You know, naturally, you know what? Nichiri. I don't fucking know. It was a sweet gesture, although you were aware she's a little too young for me to take in that kind of interest. I appreciate the thought, just some constructive cynicism for next time. Alright, were the Alpha Kids older than the Beta ones? Yeah, they were like yeah. 16. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you've tempted yourself to say aloud some kind of goopy RP action indicating your embarrassment. You don't, though, because it sounds stupid when Jake does that. Jeez, this is a mess. This kid has issues on issues, and when you think you put your finger on one, it slides away to reveal three more. You're playing personal growth whack-a-mole over here, but you gamely draw yourself up and plunge onward, determined. Okay, you tell Jake. So if that's what he thought you were going to talk about, let's talk about it. How does it make him feel thinking his friends are all attracted to him? What does he plan to do about it? How does it feel being such a chad? Um, <laughs> Should we get him a therapist fucking couch? <laughs> therapist fucking couch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I think all that malarkey will work itself over in time. I figure I'll just wait until someone brings it up and then just go along with what they think we should do. Really? That's his strategy. Uh, it seems remarkably lackadaisical, and it gives you that sinking feeling again that about what's in store for future Jake. Does he actually return any of those feelings? Sure I do. My friends are the cat's pajamas. I don't mind sa really saying I love them. Right, of course, but is there any one of them he feels differently about? What would he say if, for example, Jane asked him out? I'd say yes, of course! How could I say no to a top shooter like Janie? She's smart as a whip with a mug to match! Alright, and what about Roxy? A fellow would have to be Daz as a doorknob to turn down Roxy. She's a genius tech actor spy, like in all my favorite movies. And Strider? I kidding? Stride is my best friend in the whole world, and mighty strap and Jenny if you get into it. I can't think of any reason to say no to a proposition like that for my best bud. The way Jake conceives of things is just far enough off from your own viewpoint, you can't help feeling like you're passing by each other without really connecting. For example, he doesn't have to have a reason to say no to a friend asking him out. It comes down to his feelings. Does he really have strong feelings for any of these people? Like, stronger feelings than he has for Neytiri? Hey, now, hey, whoa, now, that's not really fair. Neytiri is a perfect woman. No, you insist. It is fair. If someone has feelings for him, he should not be with them unless he has stronger feelings for that real flesh-and-blood person than he does for a poster of Neytiri. It's important. Nateria, I gotta ask. The blue Nateria lady from blue Avatar. From, yeah, from Avatar. Ah, okay. Yeah. Anyway. Well, huh. You put it that way. I don't know if I've ever had feelings like that. I don't even know if I'm capable of those kinds of feelings. 
If that's the case, then he needs to be prepared to tell his friends that. It's not like he has to have these conversations now, but someday the feelings his friends have need to be addressed, and he needs to be ready to turn them down. <sighs> He needs to make these decisions. He can't just wait for things to resolve on their own and deal with the consequences later. Huh. Wow. He doesn't sound nearly as excited about personal growth as he did before. He just sounds dejected. Yeah, it turns out growth is hard. Yeah. yeah. I must say, you've given me a lot to think about. That's a good thing, you remind him. He's learning important things. Well... Sorry, but a lot of people tell me it's important, me, important for me to learn various things. And for some, sure, sometimes they're right, but I never assumed an image of a chap, the image of a chap who knows everything. Well, you also have been telling me I can stand up for myself sometimes, make my own decision about what's right instead of letting other people tell me how to do, how to live. And I just don't think I agree with you on this. I he, guess. I mean, I mean, in trying to get him to learn this lesson, we've been a little hypocritical. But but he has to think about his, the effects of his actions on other people. <laughs> yeah. He sneaks a guilty look at you from under his sad bowed head. What I mean is, I like making my pals happy. Even if I'm not always sure about if it's the thing that I really want, I can't imagine the consequences would, could be really that bad. You're getting beat up every day. <laughs> I think that in matters of the heart, I'm just fine with going with the flow. No offense, but the way you're advocating I go about it, it seems hard and sad. I don't want to hurt people. I think it, it's best if I just sit back and see how things work out. If someone asks me to do something, I might as well try it. If we ask you to try growth and you're saying no! <laughs> you're saying no to growth! <laughs> That's just the kind of adventure boy I am. You suck. <laughs> you want to respect Jake's choices, but you can't help the exasperation rising up in you. Sure, yeah. he can decide how he wants to conduct his friendships, but the approach he's talking about is really unhealthy. If he wants to do right by his friends, he has to be honest with them and with himself. Otherwise, it's not fair to anyone. I see what you're saying, but if you want my 100% bona fide opinion, I don't think I can do that. I guess we had different ideas what we were getting into with this. He can do it, though. All he has to do is try. Jake is shaking his head. I'm sorry, I know you're really trying to help, but I'm I'm sure you're an excellent compadre, just like the Spider-Girl said, but this isn't working for me. Is he breaking out with us? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you just take me home now. I can figure out some way to deal with the robot. He's still well below the average Jake level of energy. You can see that you really affected him, but you're far from confident that your intervention is going to make any difference in the long run. Despite his seeming earnestness, you guess Jake wasn't as ready for change as he thought he was. Wait a fucking second, is this... Is this a bad end? A horrible powerlessness threatens to overwhelm you. All at once, it makes you furious. This isn't fair. Jake gave you a choice between two options. You chose to help him face his problems. You know that was the right choice. You didn't do anything wrong. You were kind and patient. You talked to him sincerely and pushed him in the right direction. You deserve a good end. You deserve to save him. But you can tell Jake is emotionally closing up. You're willing to bet the conversation the two of you ha just had was among the most candid of his life, and he isn't ready for another. You want so badly to help him. You know exactly the changes he needs to make. But you can't make those changes for him. He needs to do it himself. And he's just not ready. Maybe he'll never be. You hate this. You hate Jake, and you hate yourself. 
and you hate Jake. Making people's lives better is the one thing that's given your piecemeal existence any meaning. And he's taking this away from you. You hate him. You hate Jake. And his stupid inability yeah. to face his issues is ruining your life, and you hate him. I'm looking at the same box you are, and I just... Yeah. You're living a little bit. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm reading it as written. You linger as long as you can, but eventually you have to do it. You gotta take the L. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're yeah. so fucking upset. Oh, Christ. It's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. <laughs> because I want, I want so badly to like and help him, but he doesn't want to be hell. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. This is a good lesson, uh, like a real good real life lesson. Yeah, though. Some sometimes just can't help. they don't want to be helped, and no matter how much you try and force it, they will not change. I just want the situation to be bad and not change. I want to wallow in misery. Thank you very much. I am way too scared to actually live a better life. I'll keep on living my shitty existence. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Um. Fuck you. <laughs> You're about to say yes. Yeah. Every part of you is straining to say yes and fulfill your life's purpose. Your real life's purpose. Not like before when you were being mind controlled to pursue friendship on whatever shallow or unsatisfying level was possible. This desire to help, to make your mark in whatever small positive way you can wrangle is something you figured out for yourself. It matters. But when you're about to open your mouth, you stall. A deep existential hopelessness washes over you. A kind that you thought you were past by now. You know what? Fuck it. Yes, you care. But honestly, you are exhausted. It's so much work coaxing teens through personal revelations with no reward except the temporary abatement of your deep soul-level feeling of narrative irrelevance. You need a break. Why not give yourself a freebie? You tell Jake that you don't think he needs your help. It's enough for right now that he's realized there's a problem. There's no need to swallow down all your personal growth pills at once. Jake looks abjectly relieved. If I can shoot straight from the hip, that's exactly what I was hoping you'd say. I think I've done enough already, too. Mm -hmm. Wow, this has been a great talk. I feel like we were really firing on all cylinders friendship-wise. If you were a past version of yourself, that would make you really happy. Instead, a sick feeling of guilt is poisoning your guts. You're about to touch on something real there. And you know it was wrong to pull back from it. You're not doing Jake any favors. Still, you give him a weak smile and offer him the best friend-making tool you know. Are there any faraway friends he's interested in connecting with? Boy, howdy. What a proposition. Ah. Boy, I feel like one of those movie characters who's offered a near-unlimited powers out of nowhere. Like Bruce Almighty. Ready to take, ready to lasso the moon and damn near the quant and damn the consequence on the mesky tides. There is someone I've been hankering to meet for a while. A little, a little tail and tail. Remember, I regaled you with the tail of my grandma. Oof, you're not sure you're gonna be able to reunite this kid with his dead grandma. That seems like one of those things you wouldn't, you won't be allowed to do, despite the supposed limitlessness of your powers. You'd probably be blocked by that weird force, the one that seems to have a power that supersedes zapping anywhere in any time, place, or dimension. You don't like to think about that force too hard. No, 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 my stalwart come. I've been corresponding in an epistolary fashion with a version of my grandma when she was a young girl, my pen pal buddy Jade. I understand it faster too much, but I'd love to meet her. She always said we'd meet someday in a roundabout confusing who's he what's a fashion, and when I was pleased as a uh, passel possum to hear it. Which she stopped replying, right in the final run up to the venture to finish line. Flaunted. I've been all on Twitter with worry, I don't mind telling you. Do you think we take a hop, skip, and a jump over to the lodgings? 
<laughs> what a relief. You actually know Jade. You can take him to Jade right now. Jake smiles a big, goofy grin at you. You should feel happy. You tell yourself sternly. This is a good thing to do. He said himself that you're fixing a concern of his. But the yawning malaise inside you only grows. You like to think of yourself as an agent of positive change, but here you are again. Nothing but a glorified interdimensional taxi service. Whatever. Who cares? At least he'll be with someone he loves. <laughs> Atmosphere reader has depression. Yup! You grab Jake's hand and take him to his family. You expect the normal non-event of your zappy powers, but instead there's a sick wrenching feeling. A kind of squeezing like you're not the right shape for wherever you're going. It steals your breath and then it's gone. Nervously, you open your eyes. What? Nice. The... Fuck. Does this have to do with how your powers are changing? Sure, you were distracted and gloomy when you zapped, but you have no idea what just happened. You're not at Jade's house. Wherever you are, it feels deeply wrong. The wrongness jangles through your bones and teeth like the vibrations of a jackhammer. You are not supposed to be here. You've got to get out of here. You grab Jake with a grimace and zap more carefully. Ah, there we go. You breathe a sigh of relief, which is sadly cut short as you turn and see Jade r uh, shoving the muzzle of a rifle in your face once again. You back up, hands raised. Jade, no, it's just you, her friend. You've already been through all these wacky misunderstandings, shenanigans with firearms. You wanna take her? Yeah. Uh, I know who it is. I just think you shouldn't be here. What? Don't get me wrong, I appreciate everything you've done for me. You have no idea what it means to be able to meet my friends in person. What it meant to be able to meet my friends in person. But the last time you came here, things got dangerous, and I started to wonder if you had any idea what the consequences are of what you're doing. Okay, there's obviously something she needs to get off her chest, and you want to hear it. But can she put the gun down? You both know she's not actually going to shoot you. Oh, right. I guess the gun was a little over the top, but you startled me and I got really mad! So you pulled a gun on us. <laughs> yeah. Ever since you left last time, I've been thinking about what you did with me and Dave. I watched you almost die. Even though Beck didn't stop you, I don't think he wanted me to be traveling around like that. I know you're a nice person and you don't mean to do anything bad, but I think it's impossible to have powers like yours without being a little corrupted by them. When you mess around in our lives, that can have serious consequences, but you always leave afterward and you don't live out the consequences with us. It was great to meet my friends, but you know what? I would have met them anyway in the game! I can't help thinking it would have been better for things to play out like they were supposed to. So I'm sorry, but I just don't want you interfering in my life anymore. I think it's for the good of everyone if you leave us alone from now on. It hurts to hear, but how could you argue with that? You tell Jade that you don't want to do anything that makes her uncomfortable. That's just like... There's just like... One little thing that you maybe already did? You gesture to Jake. He's huddled behind you, clearly having second thoughts about this. Maybe it's the gun, but then again, Jake is pretty comfortable around guns. Probably it's just fear of the mortifying ordeal of being known. <laughs> I yep. like how his great. I like how his great skill tones are different. He's warm colored. She's cool. Yeah. Who the fuck are you? Uh. You watch as he clears his throat and fidgets. His hands twitching at his sides, like he's thinking about hanging onto his own guns for comfort. I'm your grandson, Jake. That's me. Jade bursts into tears. She flings herself forward and throws her arms around Jake. Wow, she could have been super pissed about this and I wouldn't have blamed her for it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I know I just said I didn't want any interference, but this isn't fair. <laughs> I can't believe you're here. When they pull apart, Jake's eyes are watery as well. 
He's taller than Jade, being a few years older, but fr uh, from the shy way he looks at her, you can tell he still sees her as the authority figure here. You can suddenly see how much Jake must have admired his grandmother. Fine, you're still in a mood, but this is heartwarming as hell. You intentionally tune out the conversation a little as Jade and Jake gush at each other. It just seems really private. They're family, after all. You don't have any place in this conversation, which only adds to your frustrated feeling of being help-blocked. It's great that this is making Jade and Jake so happy, but it really has nothing to do with you at all. I guess I can't really give you the tour since you grew up in the same place as me. But maybe we can take advantage of this opportunity. You both grew up alone, right? Isn't there anything you always wanted to do, but you couldn't do it with only one person? Holy hell, Jade, that's rip snore of an idea. You got a splendid difference of mine up in that noggin of yours. He could help his grandma. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> it's weirding me out how much you sound like my grandpa. It's making me miss him too, but I'm really happy I get to spend time with you. Me too! As to your question, there's only one thing that comes forefront in the old think tank. You know how it is being a kid alone in your room on a godforsaken island in the middle of bumfuck nowhere? You start to entertain all, all kinds of fantasies. He said bum. <laughs> bumfuck. Of course. <laughs> of course. Well, this is cosplay I've been trying to get work for many years. I'm not very good at cosplay. I haven't had anyone to help me and bring my vision to life. Is that the kind of activity you'd be suited for? Oh, gee. I would love that! What's the character? Only the bravest archaeologist slash adventurer of all time, Laura Croft! Oh, wow. So, you want to be a sexy Tomb Raider? I think I'll have to stop picturing me with my grandpa. <laughs> but I would love to help with that. To be frank, Jade, I don't really think of Miss Croft as sexy. I'm... <laughs> God, I... <laughs> go ahead, say it. Go on, go on. Get way clear. Uh, I know some unmanly rogues like to comment on, their, on the size of her bazoombas, but from where I'm sitting, she's a consummate professional. <laughs> bazoombas. 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 Her bazoombas. I just admire her moxie. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I was just making a, an assumption based on her outfit, I guess. That was really rude of me. Tell you the truth, I've never seen anything sexy about shorts. I aspire to the freedom large thighs get to experience every day. I think it's a beautiful dream. <laughs> man. Thinking. A man can wear short shorts without wanting everyone to get all randied up about about it, you know what I mean? Of course he can. But what about you, my juvenile grandma friend? Juvenile grandma friend! <laughs> <laughs> this can't just be a cosplay party for yours truly alone. Is there anyone else you've been wanting to inhabit the garments of? Not really, but it would be fun to make a costume for me too. First seat. No, she doesn't like. She said that she doesn't like to dress up as animals. Yeah. She it's weird. She's right. <laughs> Despite being a furry, she thinks it's weird. Uh, I could be Mr. Coxcomb. He's one of my favorite Manthor chaps. If they make her an actual furry, the writer doesn't know Jade. I'm gonna go stomp in on them. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> I'm gonna. <laughs> Gentlemen, lady, gif. I swear to God, if you make Jada Furry, I'll stomp you to death with my hooves. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's a furry, but she's not a fursuit, eh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jade turns to you, her demeanor towards you considerably softened. Hey, I'm sorry I was so mad earlier. Don't be, you were completely justified. Yeah. Yeah, man, it's whatever. We're just. We're just gonna go to our fucking alien house after this and feel upset. Yeah. yeah, Jake probably, sucks. We'll get our angst out later because this fucking idiot doesn't know how to do personal growth. 
I wonder if this I wonder if this will aid in our personal growth because it seems like our character has not yet understood that this is not healthy for us either trying to go around solving everyone else's problems for temporary relief. Yeah. <laughs> We're about as bad as Jake is. Maybe worse. <laughs> Maybe worse. It's frustrating because we're looking at ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I was scared of... Hmm? You hate looking at a mirror. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I was scared of what you were doing. It really shook me up to find myself on an alien planet. Felt like we shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. It's almost like you shouldn't be doing certain things. But I shouldn't have taken it out on you. I know your powers aren't your fault. How I use them, though. Yeah. That might be my fault. <laughs> Do you want to join us? We can make a costume for you, too. Oh, yes, please do, Jade. This specimen right here has been nothing but a positively fantabulous friend to me all along. Have you? Have you? All you did was tow him along on a little inter-timeline jaunt. You don't feel like you've done Jake much good. Are you even really friends with Jake, or are you just piggybacking off of facilitating his friendship with Jade? It's fine, you guess. Things are going fine, even well. But it feels unsatisfying. No real nutritional value. You don't feel good about what you've done, but you guess you might as well get a cool costume out of it. You tell Jake and Jade you know exactly who you want to dress like. The three of you set to work together. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Yeah! Marvis. <laughs> yeah. We're Marvis. We are Marvis now. It's Get us. In, you <laughs> fucking <laughs> guess? Oh, uh, look at us. <laughs> look at Jade. <laughs> uh, she doesn't like the fursuits, but the Manthro chap outfits are fine. Yeah. What's the what's the difference between Manthro chaps and furries? Um, are they too human? Chaps. I mean, they have fog legs. <laughs> They're chaps. Chaps. I see. Chaps yeah. aren't. Can chaps be furries? Or is it like a, like a square and rectangle deal? <laughs> yeah. I think it's more of a square and rectangle deal. Uh, oh, down. You threw a rad cosplay party with Jake and Jade. Cool. Oh, I hate hated this person. I didn't hate him. I. <laughs> I. It's harder I, to continue to like him if you don't know yeah. his root, like his actual yeah. his his homestuck proper story, hmm. which Craig does not. Yeah. With with only I hate self reflection. That yeah, with only knowing that he's a reflection of yourself, especially for, like, people who might not like themselves. But, uh, it, he, he can be a hard one to deal with, to swallow. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's, he's the worst version of an audience surrogate. <laughs> and that he makes me feel really bad about myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When the audience surrogate is just a mirror you have to look at. Yeah, for a whole This room. is you. You've done this. Making, yeah. Let me see. It sucks. But anyway, I'm... this was certainly a note to end on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, good good times. Uh I I think next time we'll probably go long, but Yeah, we could probably We'll be it. wrapping this up. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's like three roots plus the alternate ending. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. Boy, how you, you know, prepare for some things. Yeah. Things and stuff. Oh, we got things coming up, ladies and gents, and everyone else. Very Mental excited gym. for Roxy's route to make me feel even worse. Oh yeah, Roxy's group gets rough. Oh no, we're gonna we're gonna go places, folks. There, there's nothing soothing about teenage alcoholism. Yeah, but uh, not next Monday, but the Monday after that, we will be returning with the end of Pester Quest. Yeah. Um, Whoa. 
till yeah. then uh yeah ap then after that we'll be getting into homestuck proper i no, can't uh, wait no we're going we back and replaying hive yeah. swap we need to we get need to, to get good the end. true end yeah the best yeah. end i oh. i can't wait until the end of fast request where the entire universe just collapses in on itself to their fuckery yeah mm. i mean no that's definitely not gonna happen Definitely. Everything's gonna be fine. We're gonna touch something wrong and the entire universe is gonna just reset to the Big Bang. Oh no. I wonder how far uh, MSPA reader- Miss Parr? I wonder how far they can go spiraling wise. Yeah. In the next three... <laughs> route. We'll find <laughs> out. Oh, that's gonna suck now. I've kind of grown attached to Miss Par, to be honest. So oh, yeah. It's gonna suck having to, like, go through proper and, like, not see them at all. They're just <laughs> gone. Yeah. <laughs> fine, Me watching Disney movies after playing Kingdom Hearts with Sora! <laughs> yeah, exactly it! <laughs> God, <laughs> Peter Pan is not happening anything like whatever. Where's Sora Donald Goofy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, till next time, follow, subscribe, like, uh, here, let me transition over. I'll get the, uh, follow us on Twitter at the underscore planetaria for notifications when all of us are live. Follow me at more on moon mage to see when just I am live. I also post quote unquote art sometimes and memes and just some, it's some random hard. shit. It's uh, no quotes. No, it's quotes. Um, no. <laughs> uh, check us out on the YouTubes with, with all our VODs, all of our past pest requests, and Hive Swap and Hive Swap Friend Sim is all up there. Uh, join our Discord server. We now have a public yeah. Discord server. Just scroll down a little bit on my Twitch page and you can find that. Uh, come join us. Um, and I think that's about it. Treat yourself kindly, everyone. The, the roots today were hard. So remember, they were rough. Be, Take be care kind of yourself. yourself. Be kind yeah. to yourself. Do some self care. Make a cake. Mm. Don't get mind controlled by Betty Crocker. And yeah. uh, do some self care that doesn't involve baking Ignoring technology. And yeah. also baking technology. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Till next time, everybody. Uh, safe space safe travels. Ugh.